Hey everyone, and welcome back. Very exciting study just published on sluggish thyroid, what it means and what to do about it. The short summary is, if you are, let's say, diagnosed with slow or sluggish thyroid, what you should do is first wait and monitor and be careful not to go too quickly onto medication. There's a really important scientific case here to make because as we've discussed on the podcast in the past, a shocking meta-analysis from the journal Thyroid found that 37.2% of people who are on thyroid medication did not need it, could stop it, and maintain normal thyroid levels with no changes in their symptoms. So you want to wait and monitor, plus use natural therapeutics to increase the likelihood that that slowness or that sluggishness will revert back to normal. Now, to be careful, I'm not saying that if you have full-blown diagnosable hypothyroid, you should wait. But there's confusion about how do we distinguish between sluggish and hypo, and when do I go on medication, when do I not? So this study was intended to help answer that question. If someone's not feeling well, they go to their doctor complaining of fatigue, constipation, brain fog, dry skin, let's say. They run a blood test and they say, well, you're not hypothyroid, but you're sluggish or what's technically known as subclinical hypothyroid. What do we do in this scenario? And this is in part what this study helps us to better understand and answers this question. So the study in question here is from 2024. They looked at a little over 2,000 individuals. And as this graph is depicting, they first screened them with a thyroid blood test. And they monitored them for anywhere from three months to three years, depending on when the enrollees entered into the survey. Then they performed a second measurement and what they found, so the second measurement was after three months or three years, they found that 60% of people saw their sluggish thyroid go back to normal with no treatment at all. So this is really important to keep in mind. It's one of the reasons why I've continually said that if you do clock in with a TSH that's only slightly elevated, 4.8, 5, 5.5, 6, 7, 8 maybe even, that doesn't necessarily mean one should start on thyroid hormone. As this study found, 60% of the people enrolled saw their TSH normalize with no intervention. But in that smaller group of 40% of people who maintained that elevated TSH, they monitored them for another 12 months. And what they found here, after monitoring this sluggish thyroid group for another 12 months, was 40% of those people saw their TSH normalize. So all this just to report and to say the crucial principle is that if you do see a mild elevation of your TSH, what's known as sluggish or subclinical hypothyroid, the first thing you should do is monitor because of data just like this. Now, we'll talk in a moment about therapeutics you can use to help increase even more the likelihood that your TSH will normalize. But I wanted to make one other point here from this paper. And by the way, if this has been helpful, please comment and subscribe. I really do appreciate hearing what people think. So I'll look forward to reviewing your comments. And this is that the level of elevation of TSH does dictate your risk. The higher the TSH, the more likely someone will become full-blown hypothyroid. Usually, it's safe to say that if a TSH is above 10, it's fairly likely that with monitoring, the TSH will keep going up, 11, 12, 15, 20, 30, 40, 60, what have you. In many cases, the average TSH level when someone's truly hypothyroid can be as high as 50. But as this graph is depicting, the lower the level of TSH when people are being monitored for this sluggish thyroid, the higher the probability that the individual will normalize with time. So in this case, what you're seeing is when the TSH was 10, there was about a 25% probability that they would normalize over time. And if their TSH was five, there was a 75% probability that their TSH would normalize. I should also mention that 
this cohort, these individuals, were 65 years of age and older. As a general rule, there's a slight creeping upward of TSH as we age, which is normal. So if you were to see, let's say, a TSH of 8 in someone who was 25, that is more concerning than seeing an 8 in someone who is 65. So we do want to look at this, this gradual shifting upward of TSH as following a age gradient. But nevertheless, the reason why this study is so important is it adds to a body of evidence showing us that what one might call compassionate thyroid prescribing is problematic. Why? Well, like we mentioned before, that meta-analysis from the journal Thyroid that found 37.2% of people could successfully stop their thyroid hormone. A different study from 2024 found that half or a little over half of people on thyroid hormone were done so without meeting the criteria, meaning that they needed the medication. Now, why this matters, because the devil's advocate question is, well, what if the person has brain fog, has fatigue, has weight gain, and the hormone might be a method to improve those symptoms. I'm with you. Whatever we can do within reason to reduce someone's symptoms and suffering, I'm on board. But I'd like to quote for you a meta-analysis of 21 randomized control trials from the Journal of the American Medical Association regarding what happens when we give people with sluggish thyroid hormone, because this has been assessed. It's a fair question to assess, so researchers have assessed this. Quoting, among non-pregnant adults with subclinical hypothyroidism, the use of thyroid hormone therapy was not associated with improvements in general quality of life or thyroid-related symptoms. These findings do not support the routine use of thyroid hormone therapy in adults with subclinical hypothyroidism, or aka sluggish thyroid. So again, why this matters is because if you're told that, well, your TSH is five or six or seven, let's put you on hormone because this is going to resolve your symptoms. That's very likely not to be the case. And instead, we want to focus on where the symptoms are coming from. Coming back to the point from a moment ago in terms of, well, if I am going to monitor my TSH to see if I go back to normal, which it does appear happens in the majority of people, what else can I do to ensure that my TSH will stay low or get back into the normal range? Selenium and myo-inositol are two great options. Selenium used at a dose of anywhere from 83 to 100 micrograms per day for about six months, combined with myo-inositol at 600 milligrams per day for six months, along with vitamin D3, anywhere from 1,000 to 8,000 IUs per day. And here is something I'm very excited about. A recent study added what I think was the most compelling data point, that red light therapy of your thyroid gland or applied to your neck can have a substantial impact. 2023 clinical trial, very interesting setup. They compared people who were given vitamin D and selenium as compared to people who were also given those vitamins, but additionally did red light therapy. And look at these results. There was a two point further lowering of TSH when people added the red light therapy on top of the supplements. And there was a nearly 400 point reduction above and beyond what you would see with the vitamins alone when using red light therapy for TPO antibodies. So all this to say that red light therapy, I am now even more convinced, is something that you should consider if you have either Hashimoto's or if you have subclinical hypothyroidism. We will be doing a follow-up podcast with more details on red light therapy devices and protocols, but essentially in this study, they used it for three to four weeks, the red light, two times per week, a duration of 160 seconds per treatment. And regarding distance, they had the laser or the light in contact with the skin. So in summary, 
When you have sluggish or subclinical hypothyroid, when in doubt, monitor. Retest your TSH every three to six months. Be careful not to too quickly go on to hormone because as we've discussed, there is a growing concern that people are being given hormone with, I think, good intentions. But now that we have adequate scientific research looking at this, we're realizing it doesn't help people. In fact, I would argue it harms people because oftentimes that hormone is then on. People are using it lifelong. Be careful of overzealous prescribers and get a second opinion if you're not sure. I can say that in the clinic, we will see one or two cases of this per week. And if you think about it, if 37.2% of people are on medication that they don't need, and we're working in a specialty clinic with a population of people who are operating in a more progressive fashion, seeing doctors who are more sort of willing to entertain compassionate use of thyroid hormone, this might be why it feels, at least to us in the clinic, like maybe one in two of the people we screen don't appear to need their thyroid hormone. If you do have sluggish thyroid, use these natural tools of vitamin D, selenium, myonositol, and red light therapy to help increase the likelihood that you will revert back to normal. So in any case, really interesting research. The paradigm here is clearly shifting away from one that years ago used to recommend that when in doubt, give thyroid hormone because it'll probably help. And again, given that JAMA meta-analysis, we're seeing that no, actually, the thyroid hormone doesn't seem to help people. Most people will actually normalize with time. And thankfully, there are natural things that can be done to help increase the likelihood that you'll have a normalization of your TSH and not need lifelong thyroid hormone medication. Okay, well, hopefully this has been interesting. Please comment and let me know what you think. And also subscribe so that you'll see future videos on topics like this from us. 